Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Peter Ballerstead. I'm the Forage Product Manager at Barenbrug USA. And it's my pleasure to moderate this presentation this morning. I'm very excited by who um, has agreed to be part of this discussion, and I think it is perhaps one of the more critical topics that the AFGC could be considering as it looks toward the t uh, years to come and what kinds of activities uh, they might be uh, wanting to do going forward. So, um, there we go, oops. Okay, so, sign of our times quiz. How many people know what this is? Show of hands. That's kind of low, right? This is, this is uh, uh, auto lancet for taking blood samples for testing for blood glucose. Um, right now, there's an epidemic of diabetes in the United States, and it's, it's estimated that in seven years, one half of all adult Americans will either be diabetic or pre-diabetic. And we'll talk about some of the implications, or the, our, our guests will be talking about some of the implications of that going forward. Um, but need, needless to say, this is a huge medical problem in the United States today. Uh, last year, I gave a presentation on dietary cholesterol and saturated fat and the proper role of animal products in the human diet, a quick review of the literature, and I expressed my belief that they had been unfairly uh, implicated in chronic disease and that in fact the human diet ought to be based on animal products rather than cereal products. That presentation was well enough received. I was encouraged to submit a topic for this symposium and I'm very grateful for the opportunity for this event to be taking place. Uh, this audience, and so now I'd just like to explain a little bit about the title just so that everybody understands that animal products from forage is the real health food. This audience surely understands that the majority of the feed that's consumed by the United States livestock as a whole is forage. This is some old data. There seems to be some hesitation here, okay. Uh, um, okay. Where 60, th uh, this is old data. It's hard to find a new report. If anyone knows of a newer report from CAST on this, I'd appreciate knowing it. But when this was issued, they calculated that 63% of the nation's livestock feed came from forages. And of course, if we look at beef cattle, 83% of the feed units that go to feeding the nation's beef cow herd are forage. Uh, these numbers are only going to increase. I think that's one of the huge promises ahead for us as we go forward. So regardless of how the beef is finished, or regardless of how the other ruminants are finished, we're talking about forage-based animal products. And my interest is not necessarily in grass-fed, although I'm all for grass-fed. Regardless of how the animal products are finished, they have a foundational role in the human diet. So the problem in my mind is not the grain-fed beef, it's the grain-fed people. Now you use the term health food and you have to acknowledge that the United States has had a very checkered relationship with various health food movements through the years going all the way back to Sylvester Graham and John Harvey Kellogg. Uh, these two gentlemen were, by any description, re religious zealots, and many of their more bizarre ideas still exist today, and in fact, they're the foundation of the public health dietary recommendations, including the eating disorder that's known as veganism. Was that harsh? You talk about health foods, and you start running into these bizarre products. Primal Texas Barbecue Vegan Jerky. In no way can this, should this be considered a health food, but of course they frequently are, and certainly they're not real in any sense of the word. So with all that as background, Animal products are the real health food, and forages are the way that they're going to be produced. <laughs> I think that one of the key things that we need to have in this community 
is an understanding that if we've done any kind of research in plant nutrition or animal nutrition, that the people in human nutrition can never do work of equal rigor to what we've done. And if we assume they are, then we're going to be confused because you're going to hear all these contradictory things coming. It's very hard to find large populations of genetically identical human beings that you can confine completely, feed exactly what you want them to eat, measure what they don't, and then, as I was told last night, sacrifice them when <laughs> the feeding trial is over and see how they did. <laughs> you may have some people you'd like to volunteer for that, but it's not real likely. So keep that in mind as we go forward. So, I'm convinced that the literature suggests that, in fact, beef is a heart-healthy substance, and we should be eating more of it. I know it's a radical statement here in this audience. And, in fact, I'm convinced that if we look at the research, what we can see is that animal products, in fact, will bring about significant improvement in a number of the chronic diseases that are afflicting the United States today. So meat is medicine. But here's the comeback, right? What do you know? You're just a forage agronomist. Well, all right, fair enough. We could have that discussion. But I thought it would be better if I could bring some different expertise to the discussion. And so it's my real pleasure today to introduce you to Ms. Adele Height and Dr. James Bales. They're going to discuss their experience with clinical application of restricted carbohydrate diets with real live, free living human beings. They're going to talk about their experience with policy and their understanding of the scientific literature. So Adele Height has her, she is a registered dietitian. She has her master's degree in public health. She's coming to us today from Durham, North Carolina. Thank you. Um, and then Dr. Bales, Dr. Bales will, do they play basketball? I uh, don't know. Um, and then Dr. Bales uh, is a pediatrician and an endocrinologist. Endocrino I knew I wouldn't get that. A, a, a pediatric endocrinologist, see, for an agronomist, not bad, huh? Um, who's been for about 13 years treating childhood obesity in his clinic and in his practice uh, with a restricted carbohydrate diet. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Adele Height. 